Morning children, how are you all? Welcome to 9th standard physics class. I am Anu John, your physics teacher. Before we start the chapter, let me introduce physics to you. Even though you have studied physics till 8th standard, we are going on to start physics officially from 9th onwards because this year we are having basic concepts of physics. Physics can be defined as the branch of science that deals with the study of natural phenomena and understanding of how universe behaves. Physics is a very interesting subject. Let us start the session by knowing what is physics. It is considered to be the life of science. Physics helps to know and understand the science behind various natural phenomena and the events happening around. Like how does an electronic equipment work? For example, with the help of electricity, how can a fan work? How does an AC work? How this camera take pictures and videos? How does this bulb glow when electricity pass through? Physics helps to get answers for all these questions. Now let us understand what are physical quantities. We are going to study various quantities while studying physics. All quantities that can be measured are physical quantities. Length can be measured, right? So it is a physical quantity. Mass can be measured, no? So it is also a physical quantity. Time. Sure, it can be measured and it is a physical quantity. Temperature, of course, a physical quantity. Volume, again a physical quantity. Pressure, we can measure pressure, so it is also a physical quantity. So all quantities that can be measured are called physical quantities. Now let me ask you, what about light? Can we measure light? No. We cannot measure light. So, light is not a physical quantity. But, what about the intensity of light? We can measure it. What about the frequency of light? We can measure it. What about the wavelength of light? We can measure it. So, frequency of light, intensity of light and wavelength of light, all these can be considered as a physical quantity. Now, let me ask you, what about sound? Is it a physical quantity? No, sound is not a physical quantity because we cannot measure sound. But wavelength of sound can be measured. Frequency of sound can be measured. Intensity of sound can be measured. Time period of sound can be measured. So all these can be considered as physical quantities. So all the quantities which can be measured are physical quantities. And physical quantities are generally divided into two scalars and vectors. Coming to scalar, physical quantities which can be completely described by magnitude alone is called a scalar. What do you mean by magnitude? Magnitude means numerical value. Suppose your height is 160 centimeter. This 160 is the magnitude. That is the number 160 is the magnitude. If you are weighing 50 kg, 50 is the magnitude. Okay. Now we can go on to vector quantities. Physical quantities which require both magnitude and direction for describing them completely are called vector quantities or vectors. Now let us have some examples for vectors and scalars for understanding them clearly. Now examples for scalars, length, time, area, energy, density, power, etc. And for vectors, Force is an example for vector. This year you are going to study more examples of vectors given, on, given in this list. Consider two forces acting on a table. From same direction having same magnitude. Say 5 Newton. What will be the total force acting on the table? It will be 10 Newton. As two forces act from same direction, net effect will be the sum of the two. So the effect on force will be 10 Newton. Two forces, each of 5 Newton acts from opposite direction. What will be the net effect on the table? It will be 0 Newton. As the net effect is the difference of the two forces. Because 5 minus 5 will be equal to 0. Hence, here force depends on the direction from which the force acts. These type of physical quantities are called vectors. Now we can move on to units. You have already studied about units of measurement in smaller classes. This is of great 
somebody ask you ask you what is your mass if it is 50 kg and you answer 50 is it giving any sense somebody who hears this will not be able to get a clear idea so to make a physical quantity completely perfect we should use units and the standard units should be used si units are the international system of measurement that are used universally in order to avoid confusions and si units are there for length as meter for mass kilogram area meter square force newton and here we have got the fundamental units for various physical quantities like length mass time temperature etc now let us see chapter motion in this chapter we are going to discuss about motion and describing motion describing rate of change of motion describing rate of change of velocity and graphical representation of motion equations of motion graphical method uniform circular motion before we study motion let me ask you what is rest if the position of the object is not changing with respect to time then object is said to be at rest what do you mean by motion in everyday life we see some objects at rest and some others in motion birds fly people move fish swim vehicles move blood flows through veins and arteries what causes the phenomenon of sunrise and sunset movement of earth some motion we can directly perceive and others we cannot just like movement of air we infer the motion of air by observing the movement of dust and technical words motion is the change in position of a body with respect to time for example when an object moves from a point a to point b object is changing its position we can see that time is also changing with position so it is undergoing a motion change in position of a body with time as motion now we can move on to types of motion we have studied simplest of all is the rectilinear motion motion in a straight line if an object is moving from a point a to point b in a straight line it is an example for rectilinear motion next we have circular motion if an object is moving along the circumference of a circle then it is called as circular motion example motion of earth around the sun thirdly we have rotational motion motion of a body around a fixed axis passing through the object is called rotational motion axis passing through the object is very important consider a hypothetical line along the axle of the fan and the blades of the fan is working along the axis of rotation types of motion last one is periodic motion motion that repeats in equal intervals of time consider a car moving along a circular road car completes one round of rotation in 3 seconds then this motion is repeating in equal intervals of time so it is an example for periodic motion along with this periodic motion car is undergoing circular motion also so it is a combination of periodic and circular motion an object can be in more than one type of motion now we can study an interesting fact about motion and rest rest and motion are relative consider a person sitting in a moving train who is at rest with respect to fellow passengers but he is in motion with respect to the outside trees and the person standing outside the train thus one object can be at rest with respect to one situation and the same object can be in motion with respect to some other object thus 
rest and motion are relative terms it is not absolute based on the point of reference an object can be at rest and the same time with some other objects reference it can be in motion okay today we have studied what is physics what is the definition for physics which is a branch of science that deals with the phenomena natural phenomena and the uh, events happening around physical quantities we have studied scalars and vectors we have discussed about units si units of measurement and its significance then we defined state of rest and state of motion then we studied types of motion then we realized why motion and rest are relative and based on the frame of reference how the same object can be in rest and motion so find out some more examples for rest and motion thank you